this thing in focus. Is the mic working? Coffee, cameras, and chill. Hello everybody, it's Jay here and welcome back to another installment of Coffee, Cameras, and Chill. Uh, before we begin, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to the first installment I did a couple of weeks back. Uh, I didn't really expect the video to go that well, but thanks to your positive feedback, uh, it really made me want to keep going with this sort of format. So thank you again for everyone who provided their feedback and hopefully this will keep on being a thing that will be ongoing. Coffee Cameras and Chill is obviously something that I started more so to connect with you guys and kind of improve my skills as a, a vlogger because I'm still not that good at talking to the camera and sometimes when I'm staring at this lens I kind of lose my train of thought. The lens is very intimidating. <laughs> so yeah, I don't even remember what I was about to say but thank you for tuning in and as always this kind of video is definitely open for discussion and comments and I very much like to engage with you guys and talk about things in this kind of video rather than say a tutorial video or a street photography video. Um, so yeah, let's keep things casual. So I got a couple of, you know, as always this thing is unscripted. I I'm totally don't have a speech plan for this video. But I do have a couple of dot points that I have uh, typed up so that I don't lose track of what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, the first thing that I want to say is that over the course of a couple of months, uh, my channel has really grown quite quickly. Um, I wasn't really expecting this. Currently, we're at the time of recording this video, I'm sitting at around 3,000. 800 subscribers and this channel is definitely going to keep going up from there. We're so close to 4k and uh, I just think, you know, tell your friends, tell your family members, tell anyone who's interested in uh, Fujifilm and, you know, photography about this channel and let's make this channel grow a little bit more. That would be greatly appreciated. So, first topic of the day coffee cameras and chill is coffee and today's coffee is uh, originated from Kenya the name of this coffee is Maganjo AB and uh, I have good expectations for this coffee I mean it's Kenya it is a washed process coffee and for washed process coffees usually they tend to be kind of bright in acidity um, and I guess very clean in the cup unlike naturals which are kind of more uh, muddy but they do have their own unique properties so off the nose how do I describe this um, it's really hard I'd say kind of like say if you were to cut yourself a red apple and you kind of just smelt the place where you cut that, that's kind of what the smell of this coffee is like. It's very hard to describe, uh, but I can't wait to drink it. It's a little bit hot at the moment, so I'm going to take a little sip. And the acidity is mild. That's the first thing I picked up. Um, next thing I notice is that it's very juicy. And when you know it's juicy, you, you, your mouth starts to salivate. The acidity, I would say, is kind of like on the ballpark of like a grape, like a red grape. You, when you bite into a red grape, that sort of acidity, it's very mild. It's not really like harsh on your uh, on in the palate. And uh, in terms of flavor, you know, I get... I get sort of like a sort of like a blueberry kind of flavor. You know, a lot of Kenyan coffees they tend to be more black currant and uh, like a sort of like a ribena kind of taste, but this Kenya it's it's more 
is more blueberry. Mm. So yeah, it's it's a very nice coffee. It has a nice sweet aftertaste. I really can't pick up on the aftertaste of this coffee, but in general, I really like this coffee. Kenya is a great country, and um, you know the coffees that they produce are phenomenal. So if you ever go to a cafe and you order a pour over or something like that, definitely try out Kenya if they do have it as a feature. Coffee, cameras, and chill. Next topic that we need to move on to is obviously cameras and gear. It's not something that I like to talk about in my usual videos because you know gear is a very subjective thing. Gear changes all the time, and um, and you know it's because it's such an ongoing topic. I can't really make a video of it every single time something new comes out. So I decided to consolidate everything and include it in this sort of format where I can just chat to you about gear. You know how friends catch up and we're all photography enthusiasts. We all like to talk about gear and stuff. You know, it's not always about photography, admittedly. So catching up on my life. A couple of weeks ago, Fujifilm announced uh, their new camera, which was uh, called the XS10. And looking at the specs of that camera, if you haven't already, it's set to be a pretty interesting camera in Fujifilm's lineup. I'm very excited about this camera, um, and uh, the features that it provides is definitely more suited for my needs. So, you know, just last week, there was a great deal going on, uh, you know, all the Fujifilm cashback stuff. Um, and I just noticed that there was also a slight discount on the XS10, which is currently available for pre-order in Australia. And it was such a great deal that I decided, you know, I'd, I'd bite the bullet and I pre-order it. So now I will be a recipient of an XS10 in the coming couple of weeks. They say that it's going to arrive in late November, so hopefully I will be receiving it sometime either late November or early December. And there's going to be, you know, you already know there's going to be content about the XS10 when I get it in my hands. And hopefully you guys will also enjoy that in combination with what my current content is, which is the uh, XS10, uh, I mean the X100V, sorry. So I want to kind of slide that in there. You know, this channel is, I, I don't want it to make this channel uh, just about the X100V. I want to make it kind of more about photography and maybe a bit more about Fujifilm in general, you know, because I am already in the Fujifilm ecosystem. That's what I want to keep pursuing. So, yeah, I, I mean, the, the XS10 is a camera that is very unique in many ways. Uh, people are comparing it to different Fujifilm cameras that are currently in the lineup. It has like a mix a mishmash of different elements from every camera. And I know that a lot of Fujifilm, uh, I know a lot of people who are already part of Fujifilm's family or ecosystem, they have mixed opinions about the XS10. Um, some of them like it and some of them think that it's a good direction for Fujifilm to head towards. Um, but some people on the other hand don't really take kindly to this camera. They think that it's a downgrade. Uh, they think that it just kind of uh, detracts from the Fujifilm aesthetic. But you know, it's everyone's personal opinion and I'm very interested in your opinion. Uh, let me know in the comment section below uh, what you think of the XS10 and um, how you think that you may or may not benefit from this new camera that Fujifilm is going to release. Uh, in terms of other things that I made purchases for, uh, I have... Um, I have made a couple of small purchases, uh, this and that. They're very, very small purchases. N nothing that I would kind of, you know, tell you guys about. Uh, it's more to do with how to. It's more to do with uh, improving the 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 quality and the workflow of my videos. So these small devices will hopefully come in handy, and hopefully you'll notice some, you know, changes, you know, uh, to my videos in the coming months. Um, if you do, um, then maybe I will tell you guys what I purchased when they arrive. They're currently being shipped. Speaking of Fujifilm, 
In other Fujifilm news, I do follow Fuji rumors, um, so I, I keep up to date with all the things that are happening with, with Fujifilm. So maybe you guys don't really tune into Fuji rumors all that much, but I kind of I, I read it every day pretty much. They're going to announce a, another camera body early next year, uh, sometime in the first quarter of 2021. And that camera is the Fujifilm XE4. Now, I've never owned any of the XE bodies, so I don't really know what this camera is going to be all about. Uh, but it seems like there are a lot of people in the Fujifilm community who are very excited about this camera. And not just excited, they have very high hopes for this camera um, with the announcement of the XS10 people are all uh, you know they, they they can never be satisfied with the features that a camera has and everyone wants and expect expects features in new cameras that sometimes may not seem like the best idea when you think of it in a, a kind of a, a sales point of view and um, you know, as much as Fujifilm likes to meet the demands of their user base, it sometimes they need to take a step back and actually think about it in terms of sales. Because as we all know, camera sales are declining and the only way to stay alive is to make cameras, but at the same time, not kind of eat in to your other camera cameras that you are offering so the xe4 is very from what i gather the xe4 is a camera that's kind of like the x pro 3 but it doesn't have the optical viewfinder and i think the build quality is going to be you know not as good as the x pro 3 and it's an interchangeable lens camera so that's that's essentially what an xe3 is right it's it's like a it's just like a downgraded X Pro 3 in my eyes. And there are a lot of people uh, talking about, you know, what they want in the XE4. Um, they want, you know, IBIS. They want, you know, weather sealing. And they want, um, uh, what was it? Uh, I lost my train of thought. But yeah, the main thing that they wanted was IBIS and where the ceiling oh and uh they want a three uh, a tilt screen either a a two-way tilt or um a three-way tilt screen like that on the uh, say x100v or the three-way tilt on the xt3 and personally i think that you know demands are demands uh people always want things but i don't think that fujifilm is going to make a camera that perfect i don't think the xe4 is going to be getting ibis i don't think that the xe4 is also going to get weather sealing the flip out screen on the other hand uh, the, the the tilt screen on the other hand maybe maybe they're going to implement the tilt screen that they have on the x100v on the xe4 or maybe the three-way tilt I, I don't know sorry um, but personally, I think that they're not going to include the IBIS because that's just essentially going to ruin the sales of the XS10. And I don't think they're going to include weather sealing because that might bite into the sales of, say, the X-T3, which is currently still a really good selling camera, especially now that it's on sale. It's, it's a very, very good camera for the price. So... Personally, I don't think the XE4 is going to be crazy. I think it's just going to be a, a, a camera with the, the viewfinder off to the side. It's going to have, you know, a, a three-way tilt screen and it's going to have all the latest uh, Fujifilm um, uh, X-Trans sensor processor and all the latest film simulations and all that. So it's going to be more of an up-to-date a refresh on the uh, XE3. Um, because I th also think that this is going to be the last, I believe this is going to be the last Fujifilm camera uh, that they're going to release before they start pushing out the new processor and sensor, which is probably, which is most likely going to be on the X-H2, the flagship that they're going to release. So, you know, the, the, it's getting old, but they're still trying to push 
one last camera model out before this uh, cycle ends. So let me know what you think about the XE4 and whether or not you are interested in purchasing the XE4 whether you've owned the XE3 and you like the, the, the ergonomics and the usability of it, um, let me know in the comment section and we can talk about it. Um, in terms of Fujifilm lenses, there is one lens that Fujifilm uh, is going to release soon, or I don't know when, um, but it's in the works. And it is the... They've got a couple of uh, lenses that they're going to release. One is like a very long telephoto lens, which is more dedicated towards uh, wildlife and sports. But there is another lens, the 18mm f1.4. And that lens is very interesting because 18mm on an APS-C is, uh, is an effective focal distance uh, of, say, like a 20 uh, a 27 millimeter full frame equivalent once you uh, once you include the crop factor and that kind of focal distance is always has always been that focal distance that I wanted to play around with um, ever since using the Ricoh GR3 that uh, Miguel kindly brought for me to play around with um, I kind of had got more of an interest into the 28 millimeter field of view um, it's it's actually the the images that you can get out of that lens, especially when you get right up to the subject, uh, it, it creates a different kind of feeling to the 35. And so the 18 millimeter is definitely on uh, my my radar. It's an f1.4, which means that it's going to perform a lot better in low light as well. Now Fujifilm currently has an outstanding lens, the uh, 16 millimeter f1.4, which you know, from all the reviews that I've seen about that lens is incredible and it's arguably one of the best lenses optically that Fujifilm has produced. Um, but it is a, a dated lens and it is getting a bit old. So I want to see what the 18mm f1.4 is like and um, make my decisions based on comparing the two because the the, the field of view is very similar uh, one's a 27 millimeter and the other one's a 24 millimeter equivalent and this lens will for me at least primarily be on the xs10 when i get it and it's primarily going to be for video purposes and it can also double up as a lens that I can use for street photography as well. So it's a win-win for me either way. But I just want to see what kind of differences it, it makes, uh, what, what kind of differences they both exhibit. And based on you know the reviews and all that stuff, then I'm going to make a decision and probably purchase one of those lenses in the future as well. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're excited about the 18mm as well because I, I am quite pumped for this lens. Um, yeah, so what else is there? Uh, another bit of news. Oh man, it's already like 18 minutes in. Uh, I better speed this up. I've got quite a bit more to go for Fujifilm at least. Um, latest news that just popped up today the xt 200 and the xa7 are now being listed as discontinued uh not surprising because fujifilm i think uh the xt 200 and the xa7s were meant to be kind of like the beginner's camera um, a camera body that beginners can pick up and and use but i think in today's kind of demographic and today's landscape these entry-level cameras aren't really making as much of an impact as they once were and the number one factor in its decline is due to mobile phones increasing in technology at a more rapid rate. Now we've seen the new, you know, if you keep up to date with tech and tech news, you know that cameras these days are performing so much better than they used to just like in a span of two years. The, the technology increase in these things have just become you know out of this world you're getting like insane video recording specs and insane you know software 
um, algorithm AI things to to improve image quality on these mobile phones, such that these beginner entry level cameras such as the XT two hundred and the XA seven are pretty much you know obsolete because why would you buy a camera that costs you know six hundred dollars and then maybe even add a lens that costs like you know another six hundred dollars where you can just buy a nice phone have it as something that you can make calls and texts with go on instagram with go on socials with and at the same time be able to record like phenomenal videos and take phenomenal photos all in a body that you can just tra take a photo transfer it straight onto instagram with no lag no you know no downtime at all so it doesn't really make sense anymore to produce entry-level cameras like this and i think it's a good move for fujifilm to just kind of cut off those entry-level cameras because uh, at this point you know you, you're not you're not gonna win against mobile phones as, as sad as that may sound uh, mobile phones are kind of creeping into the camera territories and uh, it, it, it's 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 hard to think about but anyway so Fujifilm uh, in, when we're talking about you know the camera companies and the future of camera companies I want to talk about Fujifilm as a camera company and how I feel like they can still stay in the game because as much as I love Fujifilm and as much as I appreciate the cameras that Fujifilm uh, makes not everyone in this world sees it the same way as us you know dedicated um, Fujifilm users do and it's very hard just to tell people, you know, come join Fujifilm, they make great cameras when people don't understand the brand or they don't understand the cameras because they're so used to seeing, you know, other cameras such as Sony, Nikon and Canon cameras. Fujifilm is such a different camera compared to them in, in many ways. And so I think as a company, there are a few things that I want Fujifilm, that personally I want Fujifilm to improve upon and hopefully that will encourage more people to jump into the Fujifilm system and also keep Fujifilm alive in this really, really, you know, decline in, in camera sales all around the world. If they're going to survive, these are the two things that I personally feel like Fujifilm should work on. Um, number one, and probably the most important thing excuse me, that Fujifilm should do is improve the uh, the autofocus performance and eye tracking. Uh, this is a this is a thing that I've you know been following for a long time. Every single review that I've read, you know, they always say that oh you know Fujifilm autofocus is improving, Fujifilm autofocus is getting better. But when you when you look at companies such as Sony with their insane autofocus performance, insane eye tracking performance, and even Canon with their latest cameras and their eye focus and, and autofocus tracking, it, it kind of, it, yes, Fujifilm has improved, but you're not, it's not getting there. It's, it's definitely not on the same level as those cameras. And the reason why people choose Sony's and they choose Canon's one, because they're in the ecosystem, and two, if they're new, they want something that they can rely on. And if they're not getting those pin sharp focus, if they're not getting everything in focus like 95% of the time, why would they bother with the camera, right? And Fujifilm's just lagging behind in that respect. So I feel like Fujifilm should put more effort into focusing on improving the autofocus in all their cameras so that more and more people will feel more confident in kind of either picking up a Fujifilm camera or recommending the Fujifilm camera to their friends. The second thing, and, and it bothers me just a little bit, but it's not too bad, but I can see this being a very important thing in the future. Fujifilm needs to improve their Fujifilm app on, on mobile phones, on smartphones. I don't say this lightly, I truly believe that they need to kind of sit down and just be like, okay, we need to create a better app. This app is not working out because there are so many people who have frustrations with this app. And while I'm one of those people who can deal with the fact that the app doesn't perform as good, you know, 
one of the biggest reasons why I don't like the app is because it's so slow. Like it takes literally about two to three minutes before I can connect my phone, my, my phone to the camera because it's just, I, I don't know why, it just takes a long, long time. So they really just need to improve the app overall. First of all, the speed of transfer, um, the, the, the kind of communication between the phone and the camera is just off for some reason. And the second thing that they need to kind of pick up on is uh, more features and more capabilities that the phone is able to control on the camera, uh, from the phone to the camera. So say in video mode, I want to record a vlog. Uh, maybe I want to record 4K and not be limited to 1080p. You know, those kind of things I think Fujifilm need to really address. They really need to sit down and be like, you know, what 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 are these customers really wanting out of this app? Like, I don't want to tr don't treat the app like it's it's a it's just something off to the side. I can't find the word for it. But yeah, don't don't treat the app like it's not important. Really focus on the app because believe it or not, more and more people are kind of, they want ease of transfer. And because Fujifilm is one of those companies that promote shooting JPEG and using film simulations straight out of camera, you know, those sort of things. If I'm going to get photos straight out of camera, I want to transfer it straight onto my phone as well. <laughs> straight out of the camera, straight to the phone. S-T-T-P, S-T-T-P, straight to the phone. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like, I mean, if, if you're going to market it that way, you definitely need to push your app a lot more and make it convenient for people to get it straight out of the camera, straight to their phones. Otherwise, it just never works out and you're just going to fail, right? But yeah, because at the point at this point and moving on into the future phones are only going to get better and better and if it comes to the point where the phones can just take great photos like on par with the jpegs on a fujifilm or sony or whatever no one's going to buy those cameras anymore no one's going to buy big mirrorless dslrs they're just going to buy a mobile phone and call it call, and call it a day right so i think very very important for Fujifilm to address these two issues. Fujifilm if you're watching please please listen to me because I think I'm speaking for the majority of Fujifilm people out there. I, I hope. Um, yeah but those are the camera talks that I want to you know discuss with you guys today. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you want to talk to talk about and I'll definitely chat with you in the comments. Finally, we get to the last part of the video. Uh, last time I did a video, uh, last time I featured four people. This time, uh, there is only one person that popped up on my feed lately. Just, you know, YouTube algorithms and whatnot. But uh, I found his channel to be quite good. Um, his name is Luis Chavez. And he is based in the US. Um... When I stumbled upon his video, the first video that I saw was obviously the X100V video that he made. Go check it out. Um, but it turns out he also shoots the Ricoh GR3. What a surprise. <laughs> and he also, I think he has a Leica Q2 as well. So all three cameras are cameras that I really like. Um, he has a photography background um, and he also does film as a filmmaking background as well so you can definitely tell that the quality of his videos are there in in the youtube videos that he makes he definitely puts in the time to make things look really nice and really presentable um so yeah and also he's one of those people who makes nice relaxing videos like this it's very easy to listen to it's very easy to just sit back work and have him on the side and just talking you know stuff like that so that's the only person that I'm featuring uh, this week. Nothing else has really caught my attention, unfortunately. But I'm always going to be on the lookout for potential people that I feel like most of us should watch. Um, so definitely go check out his channel. Great stuff. That just about wraps things up. I'm going to finish off my coffee and I'm going to go about my day. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you guys in the next coffee cameras and chill or whichever video that i put out next <laughs>
Stay safe, guys. Take care.